Okay, so we are starting here on page 34 with primo, which means at first. And the subject of the sentence is stupor, which um, gives us the word stupor in English. We could translate it as numbness or something like that, right? This is the shock uh, of the crowd in response to Appius's decision that Virginia should be regarded as a slave. Okay, and the main verb is, um, is de fix it, right? De fingere is to sort of um, um, shock someone, to sort of fix them on the spot. So uh, I, I translated it as stupefied. And then the object is omnes, everyone, accusative case. And then you've got your ablative admiratione, which of course gives us the word admiration in English. But here, of course, it doesn't mean admiration, it means something like wonder or shock or astonishment. Now in English, we would say astonishment at something, but Latin says astonishment of something, which is why you have this genitive phrase, rei atrocis. So uh, um, in astonishment at um, such, tam, such um, a cruel thing, atrocis rei. Okay, and then um, for a while, aliquam diu, afterwards, in de, um, silence, silentium, um, held them or gripped them, tenuit. Um, there's no object in this sentence, so we have to supply a word like eos or something like that. And then we begin the next sentence with dein, which is short for dein de, which means then or next. So then, cum Marcus Claudius, when Marcus Claudius was going, iret, right, this is cum plus subjunctive, meaning when or since, when Marcus Claudius was going, ad prehendendam virginem, to seize the girl, right, this is ad plus gerundive expressing purpose, Right, so he was going to seize the girl or the maiden or something like that. Um, and then we have an ablative absolute, matronis circumstantibus, with the married women standing around her, I suppose, standing around the virginem. Um, and when, so we've got que, yeah, and when the lamentabilis comploratio, the, the mournful lamentation or something, the sad um, wailing or something, um, of the women, so mulierum is genitive plural, the sad wailing of the women, um, had greeted him, XKP set eum, XKP set is pluperfect subjunctive because it's still following cum. Okay, so when all that had happened, Virginius, he's the subject, shaking his hands in tentans manus, so in tentans is a present participle, shaking his hands in apium at apius, said, in quit, uh, and what he said was, let me scroll down, he said, um, Appius, right, so Appi is the, is the vocative case because he's being addressed in direct speech. Appius, I um, betrothed, de spondi, I betrothed or I promised or I pledged my daughter, Filiam, um, to Isilius, Ichilio, so Ichilio is dative case, to Isilius, known to thee, not to you. And then we have this quite um, abrupt and quite shocking phrase, I suppose, um, et educavi, and I educated her, or I raised her, and again, we assume that filiam is still the object, I raised her, ad nuptias, for marriage, known ad stuprum, not for rape. So again, you got ad plus accusative, meaning for, literally, I raised her towards marriage. We might say in English, raised her for marriage. 
um, known ad stuprum. And then he says, placket. Now this is the beginning of a question. Uh, literally, does it please? And presumably, does it please you? So we have to imagine a word like tibby there, right? Is it pleasing to you, tibby placket? Um, to rush, ruere. Um, in concubitus, um, this is in plus accusative, right? Concubitus is accusative plural of a fourth declension noun. Does it please you to rush into? And a concubitus, literally a concubitus means a, an act of lying with someone. So we could translate it as a, a, as, um, a sexual encounter or something like that. So to rush into sexual encounters, uh, or sexual acts or something, um, promiscuous, um, indiscriminately, you know, sort of whenever you want, you know, without moral scruples. This is where we get the word promiscuous from in English. So to rush indiscriminately, um, ritu, uh, literally with the ritual of, we'd probably say in the manner of, um, Pecudum ferrarumque, of cattle and of wild beasts, right? A ferra is a wild beast, which is where the word feral comes from in English. So you've got pecudum, genitive plural, ferrarum, also genitive plural, and ritu, ablative singular. So he's basically saying, you know, Appius, you're not thinking morally at all. You know, you're just acting like a wild beast, just going around having sex with whoever you want without thinking of, you know, what is right. Um, um, so he's saying, you know, is this really what pleases you? Is this really what you think is good? Um, and then he says, um, Nescio, I do not know. I do not know. Um, whether, right, whether is the ne at the end of um, Pasuri, I do not know whether those men, isti, um, I do not know whether those men um, will suffer, Pasuri sint, literally whether they are about to suffer, you know, whether they will suffer. And I think in this case, it's suffer in the sense of endure, right? I do not know whether those men will suffer or endure uh, or put up with these things, hike. And, and sint, by the way, is uh, subjunctive because it's an indirect question. I do not know whether they will put up with these things. But then he says, known sparrow, I do not hope, or we might say, I do not expect that those men, illos, um, will endure it, pasuros esse, this is an indirect statement, I do not expect that they will endure it. You know, which people is he talking about here? He's talking about those qui arma habent, who have weapons. So what's the difference here between isti and illos, right? Who is um, Virginius referring to? I think, um, Isti must refer to the crowd in general, whereas illos refers clearly to the people who have weapons. So Virginius is saying, look, you know, this whole crowd, I don't know if they're going to put up with your wickedness, but I really think, you know, the people who have weapons and who can defend themselves and defend my daughter will um, rebel against this. Okay. Um, then we have another cum plus subjunctive, meaning when, okay? So when, and then the, the subject is ad sertor. So when the claimant of the maiden, virginis, uh, genitive singular, when the claimant of the maiden was being repelled, repellerator, um, passive and also subjunctive following cum, was being repelled by the crowd, ar globo. And it's not just any crowd, it's the crowd of women, so mulierum is genitive plural. 
um, and not just women, but also the crowd of circumstantium advocatorum, of supporters standing around, presumably standing around um, Virginia. Um, so in other words, Marcus, the claimant, um, is trying to get to Virginia and, and there's this big crowd of women and supporters who are pushing him away and defending Virginia. So while all that was going on, suddenly silentium, silence, uh, factum est was established, was made, right, we have to imagine est, um, literally through a herald, per praeconem. In English, we would say by a herald. So instead of per praeconem, Livy could have written um, a praecone, right? and that would be the same meaning. It's almost, I guess the idea is that the, the praeco, the herald, he's almost more like a, an instrument. He's like a means for doing this. He's not, he's not an important person in the story. So, okay, let's then go to, where are we, page 36. This is the beginning of chapter 48, which is the last, uh, I think that's the last chapter that we read. So, decemvir, the decemvir, that refers to Appius, of course, the decemvir, um, alienatus. Now, this is where we get words like alien and alienation from in English, literally sort of driven or sort of separated from reason, from his, literally from his mind. Uh, and this takes, so it takes ablative, he's alienated from his mind towards lust, ad libidinem, so driven from reason to lust. Negat, now negat means, negare means to deny something. So I would translate it as, he says that something is not the case, right? So he says that not only, so tantum means only here, not only, um, from X, the hesterno convicio, the outcry convicio, the day before hesterno, of Isaias, Ichili, and quer from the violence of Virginius, violentia vergini, and violentia is another ablative following X. And then he says about the violence, he says, um, of which, cuius, um, he had, habeat, um, that's subjunctive because we're in a subordinate clause in indirect statement, of which he had the Roman people, populum Romanum, as a witness, testem, right? So he's saying, you know, you've all seen the violence of Virginius today. So not only from Isaelius' outcry the previous day and from Virginius' violence uh, now, but also said quoque from certis indices, from definite proofs, right? This is another ablative following X, also from definite proofs. He said that he, say, um, knew full well, literally he had certainty or something, habere compertum, he, he had personal knowledge, we could say, he, he has a um, certainty that nocte tota, you know, in the whole night, ablative time when, in the whole night, um, coitus, meetings, have been done, factos esse, have been held in the city, in urbe, i.e. in Rome, ad movendam seditionem. This is another ad plus gerundiv, which expresses purpose. So for moving or stirring up or promoting seditionem, sedition or rebellion. Right, so basically Appius is saying, look, you know, I know that there's a rebellion happening and I know it because, um, 
Isaelius was stirring up trouble yesterday. I know it because Virginius is stirring up trouble today. Um, and everyone can see that. And he says, I also have some definite proofs that some rebellious meetings were happening last night. Um, and he doesn't tell us what those definite proofs are because he may well be making them up. Um, and he's going to use this idea of rebellion as an excuse um, to justify the fact that he's brought soldiers, he's brought soldiers to this meeting. So if we then go to the next sentence, itaque, which means and so, and then we're, we're in indirect statement again. So, and so he says that he say, haud inscium not ignorant of that struggle, eius dimicationis, genitive case, um, has come down, de scendisse, you know, come down to the forum from his house, um, cum armatis, with armed men. Okay, so he's saying, you know, because I know about this plot, that's why I've come down today with armed men. Not, he says, known in order to violate or injure, ut violaret, anyone peaceful, quem quem quietum, but in order to, said ut, but in order to um, coerce or sort of suppress or something, coerceret, uh, this is subjunctive because we're in a purpose clause, but in order to coerce turbantes, those who are disturbing, right, present participle accusative, those who are disturbing the otium civitatis, the peace of the state, so otium is accusative, civitatis, genitive, the peace of the state, pro maestate imperii, um, in accordance with the dignity or majesty of his office, of his job, imperii. So he's basically saying, listen, you know, my job as a magistrate is to keep the peace, and that's why I brought these armed men today. And of course he's lying, you know, the real reason he's brought these armed men is because he is doing something illegal, basically, and he doesn't want, um, he, you know, he, he knows this might cause uh, violence, right? And so he wants to be able to make sure that he wins. And, okay, we then go into direct speech. So he said, in quit, um, accordingly, pro in there, you know, because of this, it will be better, erit melius, to be um, peaceful, quiesce. So he's saying, you know, for you guys, it would be better to just stay calm, stay peaceful, because, you know, I've got loads of soldiers. And then he says, e, right, e is the imperative from ire. So it means go, lictor, vocative case, go, lictor, sub move turbam, sub move is another imperative, remove the crowd. Et da viam, da is another imperative, give a path to the master, domino, dative case, referring to Marcus, ad prehendendum mancipium. Uh, this is again a gerundive, uh, ad plus gerundive expressing purpose. You know, give him a path for taking, prehendendum, his property, mancipium. Okay. And the property, of course, refers to Virginia. Um, cum, cum plus subjunctive meaning um, when, when he had thundered in tonuiset, when he had thundered these things, hike, um, full of anger, plenus irai, full of anger, the crowd, multitudo, um, and then there's quite a few pronouns here. Literally, the crowd itself, multitudo ipsa, um, scattered itself, demovit se. And then the phrase sua sponte means of its own 
a court literally with itself being willing. And that's where we get the word spontaneous from in English. So sua sponte, of its own accord. And Livy is really putting lots of pronouns in there to emphasize the fact that the crowd itself is deciding to run away. Right? The soldiers haven't actually done anything yet, but the crowd are running away. Um, and queer, the girl was standing, puella starbat, deserted, deserta, a prey, prida, uh, literally a prey of injustice, or a prey for injustice, uh, or even a prey to injustice. So you could treat that as genitive or dative, really, because the ending is ambiguous. So a prey to injustice, or something like that. 